come round here where I've seen them a few fish coming round the back of that island at range. And I'm going to chuck the fish by out there and hope to find a nice clear spot. I'm going to ping them just as they get round the back of that island. About there would be per oh, actually, it did donk. That'd be perfect if that was clear. Feels clear. What I'm going to do is let him up. There it is, and then he be in Wi-Fi range, connect him up. There he is, and record. Right, that is recording now. So I'm gonna slowly go down and have a look at that spot and hopefully that'll be better than the last couple because that is exactly where I want to present. Right, let's let that back to the top. Make sure that's upright, reconnect and have a look and see what we got. Uh, connecting, connected. Um, files, replay. Going down. Oh yeah. Oh, that's better. Oh, yeah, it's a lot better than the other spots. And right on target, really, as they come around the back of that island over there. It looks like it's been fed on anyway. I'm going to stick a little bit of bait around that. It's going to get me bomb rod. We're all ready now. Let's get a bit of boily action going on. Oh, I don't know if you saw that, but a fish just rolled right behind the marker, about two foot behind it. That'll do, wouldn't it? <laughs> Happy with that one. Couple more like that, and we'll be sorted. Right, I'm back up on that long spot. Check that, it's been out there a few hours. See what's happened. I wrapped it up at the exact distance. I've just reclipped it so it should land straight on it. Just on the right hand side of it. I did put a couple of spoms across that way. So. All right, let's connect that up and have a look. That is the beauty of these things. I mean, you know, the, the name throws you a bit when it says fish spy. It's, it's more than just spying on fish, to be honest. Uh, it's mainly looking at the bottom, checking the spots. I mean, I baited that up earlier on, and uh, short of going out in a the boat, there's really no other way I could know if that bait's been eaten or not, or if the spot's been worked over, or, or anything that's happened. If the bait's maybe still there, which I'm hoping it's not. Um, you know, that information isn't available to me any other way apart from with this camera float. Right, and replay. Let's a little bit. Hmm. It's not very pleasing. <laughs> I can see boilies. <laughs> I was convinced they were going to eat it there. It's right on their route. Most of the fish I've seen have been up high coming around there. Maybe it's just a transit route. It looked like a spot, but like I said, you know, I wouldn't have known that. But as you can see, or I'll show you in a minute, there's bait still there. That's not the one then, is it? Right, I'm going to check that other little spot down there on the mouth of that bay. 
because that looked even better to be honest hopefully that'll have gone okay around here i'm gonna have a look in this little bay it's all very overhung here it's got lots of trees hanging over um very sheltered so i think it's supposed to be fair depth along here so i'm just going to check out the bottom here off the end of that tree looks like a prime spot It'd feel a little bit soft actually as that at the bottom there. There he is, right under that biggest tree. And the bottom of the shelf. Right, connect up to him. Quite oh, quick, nice and close. And record. Let's take that down. See what we got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of <laughs> might with a chod you might get away with it, but it's quite typical of a little bay to be honest. You do have to be careful with bays depending if they're on the back of the wind like this, uh, you can get quite a lot of debris uh, that's fallen over the years off of these trees and it's just sort of drifted in here. And that's pretty typical of a debris strewn margin. I wouldn't say that was ideal. It don't look like it's been sifted through or cleaned over at all by fish. I think we'll give that a swerve. Onwards and upwards. Okay, we're around in one of the main swims on the lake now. Um, and I think the, the top spot in here is off the corner of that island. Uh, the lake was quite busy over the weekend. So I'm going to have a little check out there and see if I can see if anything's been going on. Oh, look at that, absolutely spot on. There we go. Right, let's connect that. There's actually a couple of fish cruising about as well. Bum, bum, bum. Record. Just let that up really slowly so it gets a decent view. Oh, he's up. There you go. Okay. Right, let me connect her up. Hmm. Popular swim. Obviously had a fair bit of bait in it over the weekend, I'd say. Because it's still got some. Not really happy to fish over the top of somebody else's bait, to be honest. I never know what it is, do you? Uh, Nice spot, but no. Keep on searching, I think. I have got one in mind around over that other side by the bay, so I think we're going to have a look at that one. Right, I've come up to the, the far end. I know it's a bit shallower up here. Um, this is where the, the weed grows in a month or so's time. Uh, I'm going to have a look, I can see a, I don't know where the lilies growing there and behind, but there's what looks like a nice clear channel in the middle. Uh, looks can be deceiving, so let's have a proper 
proper underwater look. Well, it's a little bit deeper than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. So have a look. There we go, there we go. Mm. There's a few, what are they? That's pads coming through, isn't it? Don't look the nicest bottom either, looks a bit sort of choddy, muddy. There's definitely pads growing up there. Looks like there's a bit of a channel there, but like I say, looks can deceive, because there's definitely a bit of new growth coming out there. All right, well, now we know. Now we know. I'm going to flick this on, chuck it out, and check that spot that I baited up earlier on that bar. Because I've seen quite a few fish coming in here. And rather than keep wasting an hour here, an hour there, I'm going to see if there's any bait left on it. Because it was fairly easy to see because it wasn't that deep. There we go, big cotton because it hit the bottom. Just going to let that up slowly, it's already on. Should get a decent bit of footage. I put a fair amount of bait out there so I'll if it's still there, I'll see it easily. It's not that deep there either. This connects up to him. There we are. And record. Right, that is now recording. So if I take that down at the bottom. Well, it can only be about three foot there. I could probably see that from the surface, to be honest. Come up slowly. Now, that should reconnect. Okay, and play that back. Well, one thing's obviously apparent, there's an acute lack of boilies there. And there was quite a lot. I reckon that's good enough. There's nothing down there. They've been visiting. Like I say, I've seen a few coming in across there anyway. I think I'll leave that there as a marker and just cast straight behind it because that looks like a decent spot. That'll do. Perfect. A few boilies while we're there. I can chuck them that far. In fact, I'm going to put too much out. So I'm going to just ping the next fish that comes along. That'll do. Oh, we've got a mirror. That's been that, and it's lovely. Now that was a proper result. That just goes to show you what you can see through a fish by because that was off that little spot that was cleared off. And I wouldn't have been in here otherwise. So they've obviously been visiting that sneakily and eating all my boilies. And now we've got a mirror carp. 
nearly. It's a very tight swim, this. <laughs> you suddenly only got a second lease of life. Decided I'm going to scrap one of these three rods because three is far too many in here. There you go, now he has got the other line, he'll be happy. That's all he was trying to do. Is that all you were trying to do, Mr. Fish? You've succeeded now. Well done. And here he is. Hey, America off at last. And what a scrap, eh? All courtesy of a little bit of subsurface filming on me fish spy. Hey, we out teched you, Mr. Carp. But you nearly out muscled me. Bless you. Lovely way to end the evening. Mwah. Well done. He's a pretty one, isn't he? It's lovely. They've all been lovely looking fish, actually. We like it here. Well done on winning the Total Carp Award. No problem, thank you. Why do you think you won it over so much competition? Um, because I think because it's so unique, um, you know, there isn't anything else that's exactly like this. Uh, it's not an echo sounder. It's not like other castable products that tell you stuff about the lake. This is actually a camera float. It gives you a 100% view of what is in your swim. You know, you take it down there, you're filming real time what's on the bottom. Uh, you're letting it up and you're seeing a perfect picture of not an impression of what's down there, you're seeing exactly what's down there. And I think that that's the difference in this, is that it is completely unique. So why would you use that over any other conventional echo sounder? Um, for those reasons, really. Like I say, you know, you cast out a conventional echo sounder, it'll give you a graph of the bottom, it'll show you maybe the type of bottom, you know, whether it's firm, um, weedy, they can get confused with that. It can look like a shallower area and it's a weed bed. You're not 100% sure with this. You know, you're looking at a film of the bottom. It's like having your eyes underwater. You know, you'll see, if it's weed, you're seeing weed. You're seeing weed, in colour, weed. Um, if it's silt, you're seeing silt. If it's gravel, you're seeing that, bait, whatever. It's, it's because it's an actual view of the bottom rather than an impression. That, that's the advantage of this. Also, although it sounds quite obvious, Another advantage is once you've found that spot, you know, you've got it up there, you, you've played it back to your phone or your device and you've had a look, it is a marker float as well. So you leave it in situ, you cast to it, you bait round it, you know, so it's do, doing the job of a marker float and when you take it down, it's doing the job of a camera and if the water's clear enough, it can do both from the surface. Yeah. You can live stream. You know, you haven't always got to go down and have a look if the water's, you know, clear or shallower enough. Uh, you can leave it on the top and you can see what's going on in real time below it. See your bait going in, even see your rig going in if you're accurate enough. A number of uses then. Yeah, yeah, loads. So on this session I've struggled with phone signal. Would that right. be an issue no, if I'm using it? No, it, it doesn't. And, and a lot of people say that and, and you can see why because, you know, it, it's connected to your phone. But it's actually, if you imagine this as a modem at home, yeah. you know, this sends the signal, your phone receives the signal. It does. It relies not at all on anything. It doesn't go via a satellite. Yeah. You know, it's coming from this directly to your phone. You can have no phone signal, no internet. Makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. If you've got full signal, you won't get a better reception. If you've got no signal, you, you won't lose it. This is the sender, your phone or your tablet or whatever is the receiver. It's a direct Wi-Fi connection. So would the water clarity make a difference from murky water? Um, it makes a difference, um, but it will perform in, in any sort of water. It just depends, you know, if it's gin clear, then you're going to see from the surface down a considerable depth. Uh, if you've got any colour in the water, like we have here. I mean, yep. we've been filming here and, and this water is far from clear. Uh, you just put it onto record, go down to the bottom and come up in increments. Um, and, and you're, you know, from zero, you're going to have a good vision 
uh, and come up in increments until you lose that vision yeah. you know, due to the clarity of the water. But no, you can always get something. You can just go down and have a look. So will it spook fish when you're casting? Um, it'll spook them if you hit them right on the head with it, as would, <laughs> as would anything. But um, no, it doesn't spook them when it's in the water, no more than a normal marker yeah. it would. I mean, we've got lots of footage of fish swimming underneath it. You know, I've taken some great footage where I've put it out there and straight away, you know, I've seen carp going underneath. Um, pike come up there quite interested in the splash. Um, no, no, not really, no, no more than a normal marker would. So do you need any specialist gear to cast this out? Um, I wouldn't say specialist, uh, spod rod, decent size reel, 50 pound braid. You know, a lot of people have said to me, oh, you know, it's, it, what if you crack it off? You know, it's more expensive than a normal marker. But with 50 pound braid, I mean, you're snapping your rod before you're snapping 50 pound braid. Uh, so just use that straight through and it's absolutely fine. You know, if you're all chucking it a massive distance, you could even use a heavier leader than that. But yes. 50 pounds is, you know, a substantial bit of kit. So no, that's why I use 50 pound braid straight through, spod rod and big reel. So what's the maximum range you can use the fish supply at? Um, well, I mean, you can use it at any range, like to pick up the Wi-Fi um, in the, you know, in good conditions. Uh, you probably get 100 yards, okay. uh, but you can use it further. So if you set it to record before you cast it, and you can cast further than that if you're casting out of signal, uh, or even some guys take them out in bait boats, you can take them out as far as you like, because it's actually already recording everything it sees. So if you took it out, let's say you took it out 200 yards in a bait boat and dropped it off, and you could film there, you could bring it back a bit, you could film there, yeah. you know, film all the way back in, and when you get it on the bank, just replay and see what you've got. So, you know, if it's, if it's beyond signal, it's still doable. One thing worth mentioning, the name Fish Spy gives you one impression that you're spying on fish, um, but that's not its sort of primary function. Uh, but Bottom Spy didn't have the same ring to it. Um, it's for looking at the lake bed. It's for looking at baited spots. It's for watching the lake over the years, see how it's progressing, how the weed's going, what spots are being cleaned off, how your pre-baiting campaign's going, if the spot you're thinking of fishing has got someone else's bait already on it. You know, there's a million and one uses for it. Um, but, you know, seeing exactly what is below the surface on the bed of the lake and how it's, you know, being affected by the fish is more its function than actually watching the fish. You do get to see fish, yeah. and it's great when you get a bit of footage of a great big carp coming past. Occasionally, you might even get one feeding, you know, if you've got it in the right spot at the right time. But generally, you know, it's for searching out the lake bed and seeing what's going on, which is obviously gonna, in the long run going to help you catch more fish. Fantastic. Mm -hmm.